Hi everybody, this is Dennis from the Dennis and Andy Show and we are going to do uh, the full recording um, and review of the book and record set, The Monster of Frankenstein. This is the uh, Power Records book. This is from 1974. Um, the story itself was reprinted from um, Frankenstein number one, I believe, from 1973 from uh, Marvel Comics. Um, Gary Friedrich uh, wrote the original story, and Mike Plug uh, did the uh, artwork. Um, I do love when, as soon as you open it up, you know, I do love the beginning of the, you can see some of the Marvel characters, some of the Defenders, Captain America, uh, and then you see, you know, Planet of the Apes, you get a little bit of the uh, Universal Monster stuff, so yeah, anyway, it's just kind of cool. This is one I did not have as a kid. Um, a shout out to uh, Larry Allen and his wife Robin who wound up digging this one uh, up for me. So I picked it up at the uh, uh, Charlotte Comic Con this weekend. So I thought this would be a really good one to play. The record does have a, a bit of a warp in it, but we're going to play it as is. Um, it's not scratched, but you'll hear it going on there. Um, so you'll be able to bear with it, but you'll get the story and we can follow along with it. And then we'll talk a little bit about the artwork and stuff as soon as it's done. So let's get this party rolling. Power Records presents The Monster of Frankenstein. A solitary figure climbed higher and higher. Finally, his legs grew weary and he sought refuge in a cave. There, Victor Frankenstein began to search his mind for an answer to a terrifying problem. How had his experiment for the betterment of all mankind gone awry? Why? He had created a monster, and his creation had to be destroyed. But as he sat, he failed to notice another sinister presence at the mouth of the cave, until it was too late, far too late. You! Yes, and for your crime against nature, Victor Frankenstein, you must die! No! Animals fear fire, and so should you. If only I could reach my gun. First you burn me, then you shoot me. Good Lord, the bullet barely faced him. Don't, please, let me explain. Explain? How will you explain, Frankenstein? Look at me, at what I am. No, there will be no explanation, save for mine. And when I have finished, you will pay with your life. But for us, there must be an explanation of how all this came to be. How did Victor Frankenstein come to create the monster who now terrified him? He came from a wealthy family, and they were all there to bid him farewell. His fiancée, Elizabeth, his younger brother, William, his father, and his best friend, Clerval. I shall miss you, dearest Elizabeth. Take care and Godspeed. Study hard, dear Victor. Gentlemen, the coach is packed and ready. And so the aspiring young scientist left for the University of Geneva. Victor will do well if his ambition doesn't block his path. Frankenstein did well indeed. Your work is outstanding, my boy. And today we begin the dissection of human cadavers. With each lesson, Frankenstein became more and more impatient to delve ever deeper into the mysteries of the human body. By the end of his third year, he was prepared to embark upon the darkest voyage into the unknown in the history of mankind. Any place that harbored an undamaged corpse became the haunt of a possessed Victor Frankenstein. Night after night, he dragged his grisly loot to his secluded laboratory, until at last his project neared completion. I've worked nearly six months, but if I succeed, as I know I must, I will have created human life from that which was dead and bridge the final gap which leads to immortality. There, the final injection. Now, I can only wait and wait and wait. It's not moving, not even breathing. Live, blast you, live! Frankenstein stared at the monster's lifeless form. Then, overcome with disappointment, he turned back to his notes. My God, it's alive! various parts of the dead. I'll be famous. I'll... Wait. He's rising. Walking toward me. Staring at me. 
Those eyes, those horrible, glowing yellow eyes, filled with hatred. Hatred of me. No, stay away. I created you. Do you hear? You must obey me. But the creature would not obey. It continued to advance on its creator until in total panic, Frankenstein fled in mortal fear of the thing he himself had created. Trembling, the exhausted doctor fell into a deep, fitful sleep. Hours later, sensing an unseen presence, he bolted upright to see the creature hovering menacingly over his bed. <sighs> Paralyzed with fright, Frankenstein watched his creation as it gestured toward him, and he knew this monstrosity must be destroyed. Desperate, the doctor lashed out. Get away from me! Do you hear? Keep back! But the velocity of the chair striking the creature's rock-hard skin was like a matchstick striking a boulder, and far more serious. Frankenstein had established himself as the creature's enemy. Nothing phases the creature. Have to get away. Escape. And so Frankenstein ran for his life. He fled into the rain-swept darkness, his fear too great to allow him to stop. But finally the body overcame the mind, and he collapsed on the cold, wet earth. As dawn stole across the lawn where he rested... Victor, in heaven's name, what are you doing here? Open your eyes, man. Clerval, oh, thank God you're here. Clerval took his delirious friend to his own hotel room, where he hovered between life and death for many weeks. It has been a long ordeal, Victor, but the crisis has passed. Therefore, much as it grieves me, my first words to you must be those of greatest sorrow. My friend, your younger brother, William, He's been murdered, and your father's young ward, Justine Moritz, has been charged. William, dead? And poor Justine? Good Lord, I must go to father. The journey back to Geneva was long and painful for Victor Frankenstein. Could the monster, and not poor Justine, have murdered William in an act of revenge? Even in the arms of his beloved Elizabeth, he found it impossible to erase the creature from his thoughts. I can't believe Justine guilty. It is difficult for all of us, Victor. But the facts. She was found clutching William's pendant only a few feet from where he was murdered. Tell me, Father, is it not possible the murderer placed the pendant in Justine's grasp while she slept? What sort of being could commit so heinous a crime than blame it on an innocent girl? And even as his father asked the question, Frankenstein knew the answer. I knew it! Was certain of it! And now my most terrible suspicions are confirmed. The creature lives and seeks revenge! But I must stop him! I must! What is it, Victor? Why did you bolt from the room? I saw someone peering in the window. But these tracks show that he got away. When... when will Justine be hanged, Father? Tomorrow, I believe. There's no hope for her. And so Justine Moritz was hanged, died at the age of 21 for a crime she did not commit before the glazed eyes of a tortured Victor Frankenstein. The monster had laid his trap perfectly, and two innocent people now lay dead. The next morning, Frankenstein packed and departed into the mountains in hope that the jagged peaks would grant him refuge from the horrors of the world below. But the very monster he dreaded, having followed him, now confronted Victor Frankenstein and we flip to side two. For days I wandered through the dense forests. It would have been easy for me to collapse and die, but I refused. Finally, on the tenth day, fate intervened. A huge bear came out of a thicket toward me. Weak with hunger, but strong with the desire to live, I fought him, and in the end, it was I who survived. Yes, I survived, finally. Food! It gave me the strength I needed. Deeper and deeper into the mountains I trudged. The loneliness became far more difficult to bear than the mere pangs of hunger. Then one day, I came upon a small cottage in the clearing, and I prayed it would be my salvation. For several days, I hid at the edge of the forest and watched its inhabitants. A blind old man and his daughter and son-in-law. I watched observed and learned the three people became my friends though of course they did not know of my presence 
Oh, how I yearned to go to them, to tell them I was their friend. But it was impossible. I remained hidden, watching and listening, gradually beginning to learn the basics of their language. The winter passed slowly, but my learning process continued. Under cover of darkness, I did chores for them. I don't understand, Father. Who would do this for us, and why? Such good fortune is not for us to question, my son. Finally, as the snows began to melt, I watched the couple bid the old man farewell. We will return within a week, Father. Will you be all right here, alone? But of course, my dear. Have a good trip, and do not worry about me. This was the opportunity I'd waited for, the chance to make a friend. The old man was blind. I argued with myself, so he'd have no reason to fear me. But as I struggled to make a fateful decision, fate herself, in the form of a starving, salivating wolf, made my decision for me. Without the slightest hesitation, I folded from my shelter and ran toward the house. The snarling beast crashed through the door. I've never known such anguish. Only a few yards away, a frail, sightless old man was fighting for his very life. And if he lost, then so would I. As I reached the cabin door, I discovered the door was locked. Summoning all the strength that remained within me, I prepared for one final assault. The door gave way. I rushed toward the bloodthirsty creature and pulled it from my friend, snapping its wretched neck in the same swift motion. I turned to the moaning, bleeding old man and prayed that his life would be spared. For three days I sat vigil with him, treating his wounds and begging him to live. Then, miraculously, on the fourth day, he spoke. Who are you? I have sensed your presence, noticed your kindness to me. But up to now, I've been too weak to say thank you. My eyes filled with tears of gladness as the old man talked. At last I had made a friend. At least until the others returned. You are kind. The next two days were the happiest of my miserable life. We talked, we became close, but I knew it was too good to last. Tomorrow my family will arrive. And I can hardly wait for them to meet you, my friend. I froze at the very thought of their return. Early the next morning, they came. By the saints! What sort of thing is that? In the cottage with your father. Stay here, my love, and pray that I am not too late to save him. Get away from him! He's just a blind old man! No! Wait! You do not understand. I am... There was no reasoning with him. His eyes were glazed with disgust and hatred as he advanced on me with the axe. I wanted to scream out, to explain to them, but there was no time. Kill it! In God's name, someone help us kill it! I fled, her words ringing in my ears as I ran into the forest. Kill it! Kill it! Not him, but it! Once more I was alone, totally alone, and in that brief instant, I learned the meaning of the word hate. Yes, hate, Victor Frankenstein. And in that moment of my greatest despair, it was upon you that I swore vengeance. You, who are the cause of all my pain and grief, of all my loneliness. At last, I found you, Frankenstein. And now, you die. Go ahead, kill me. I deserve no better fate. You want to die? Then I will make you live. Live and suffer as I have. Slowly, almost gently, the monster let his creator slide to the stone floor. Then, as Frankenstein wept uncontrollably, the monster once again spoke. Farewell, Dr. Frankenstein. When you are feeling sorry for yourself, for the grief you have known and will know, Remember what I have suffered has been a thousand times greater. It was a shaken Victor Frankenstein who arrived back in Geneva. Only to find that the monster's threats were all true. Not only had his best friend Clerval died under mysterious circumstances, but even more grievous news awaited him. Elizabeth's been murdered, and your father, I'm afraid, he's dying. And so the old man was. 
The news of Elizabeth's death had been too much for him. His father, Clerval, Elizabeth, all dead. It was more than the grief-stricken Victor could bear. Shortly after the funeral, he was placed in an asylum for an indefinite period of time. After several months, he gained his release. You have progressed, Victor. I only pray this obsession will not yet destroy you. It will not, Doctor. It will only destroy the thing which nearly destroyed me. And so Victor Frankenstein set forth to find and destroy the monster he had created. Now the lust for revenge was his, and it consumed and possessed him completely. More than a month passed without so much as a trace of his quarry, until finally he saw something move far in the distance. At last the trail had grown warm. His burning lust for revenge pushed him to and beyond the limit where normal men would fall. The end was drawing ever closer. He found footprints, footprints which could only have been left by the monster he saw. A final burst of strength coursed through him. He was close now, closer than he'd ever been. Suddenly, the two adversaries caught sight of one another. The shell of the man who was Victor Frankenstein advanced. Now, cursed beast, revenge will be mine. Bear was split by a sharp... Crackling sound, the sound of the ice break. The deadly gaping jaws opened wide in an instant. The monster was engulfed by the icy black waters of the Arctic, down plummeted, the end was at hand. But perhaps it was only right that such a creature should die at nature's hand, and away Victor Frankenstein would have been cheated of his final satisfaction, for its very existence had been an affront to her sovereignty, death did not come easily, he battled her grim assault for as long as his lungs would allow, but in the end, he sucked the freezing salt waters inward. And it was, at last, peace was his. So obviously, you guys can tell when it gets to the end of the record, for whatever reason, the way it was printed, it did not, uh, it wouldn't quite, it wanted to quit at the very end. So anyway, I just kind of finished up the uh, story for you. So, like I said, this was a, a reprint of... Uh, Frankenstein issue uh, number one. Um, yeah, take a look. What did you guys think? Um, this is not one that I had as a kid, so I en I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought the artwork, you know, when you think of the old uh, monster stuff from Marvel, I think it fit in. This was a good uh, recreation of it. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I thought the narration was, was solid. I enjoyed the uh, character actors that they got in for it. Um, the special effects that they do in the background, I thought those were good. Um, there were a couple spots that were a little loud, but all in all, I actually thought it was, uh, you know, quite good. Um, I do enjoy these kind of classic uh, monster ones. So all in all, I'm going to give this one a CGC rating of... Uh, an 8.0. I thought it was really good. Again, it's not like the Star Trek ones where we have, it, you know, voices in our mind of how Captain Kirk should be, etc. Um, but I thought that everybody that they got involved with the book, was, this was a success. Wish I would have actually had this one uh, as a kid. These are just getting hard to find in really good shape playing. So I've been picking up a bunch of them. And a lot of times there's issues with some of the records, but that's the way it is with these uh, older, older, uh, you know, mediums like this. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. Give me your thoughts um, on what you guys think of these book and records. Um, do you want me to keep doing them? Uh, smash the like and subscribe button. Join us when I do the quick flips, full reviews of our comics, when I do the full playthroughs for um, the book and records. We do our live streams where Andy and I have on comic book artists and, um, and uh, writers, artists, guests. And then we also do our TV and movie show reviews. You know, all the good nerd stuff that we all enjoy. So anyway, hope to talk to you all soon. See you on our streams and later, everybody.